welcome Joe O'Brien and say thank you very much. Hi everyone, it's great to be here, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is John O'Brien, the title of one by is the other board of the and I'll go into that for good reason as we crack on with the talk. Uh, the ladies tend to love the sound of this one when they hear it, it's best with the single being 14 days of happiness, but um, we'll look at a different style of happiness for this one. I'll jump straight into it. Um, where we stand right now, as mankind, I'm sure a lot of you will agree, you'll have people in this room who are fully know you have broken up, know we're getting lied to, know that there's definite cause for change, we're not going to see if we have trouble if you head down. This group we're on, especially with the GMO foods, microchip, and the whole big brother actually coming in and putting the jackboot on our skulls on a daily basis, which is what it tends to be like. And I'm sure you can see that if we head down this route we're in, we're pretty soon going to run into a hell of a lot of trouble. And it's going to be what I deem is impossible to be turned back to the state where we um, were in a safe place, okay? So, we've got the Green Man Movement and we've got the Law of Attraction. Now, when you wait too much to the Green Man Movement, I found was always very disempowering for people because it's saying that you know you're being pressed down from all these different angles and your only excuse is basically we not renounce your debt and come away from it and totally exclude yourself from the system that is corrupt and uncontrollable. What I prefer to do is give you techniques where it doesn't matter what you do, you can beat it. And I think psychologically that's a lot more of a healthier, proactive mindset to be in instead of being constantly beaten down on a daily basis this will give you the chance to just be able to toss all that aside and begin to create yourself you all be thirsty oftenest pessimist and realist while you guys are arguing about the glass of water being full or half empty i right the opportunist right life is about making the best with what you've got. Yeah. We always you, know, you keep up with the Joneses, you can look out across the street, someone's got a nice car, you go not you feel bad. You're constantly comparing yourself on a daily basis with other people who aren't you. You don't know their story, they don't know yours, and they probably have quite a hard time in their life too. And there'll be many reasons why in a position that you think is better than the one you're in. Yeah? It's like you might see, if you have no family, you may see people with a family and be jealous. Whereas people with lots of kids will look at people with no kids and be jealous. This is all about perspective. <coughs> Gratitude equals happiness. Gratitude unlocks the fullness of life, it turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos to order, confusion to clarity. It can turn a meal into a beast, a house into a home, a stranger into a friend. That's why we never need The perspective you need to change is inside each of our heads and hearts more the heart because i'm sure you've seen all this latest evidence that says the heart resonates that set pulse with people together i quiet singing more in the band the heart will resonate all their hearts will resonate at a combined level yeah it's synchronized so we've got no excuses really it's not about the cards we've been dealt it's about playing your best hand when it counts you might be able to tell me 10 things right now off the top of your head that you absolutely suck at. <coughs> yeah? You should easily be able to think of everything you can't do. What I'm trying to suggest to you that this ball is that you find that you can do and you exploit what you can do 
until it becomes what you love doing. And usually you find they are what you can do, what you love doing. You know? So it's about perspective, being clever. You know? Because we can't make our own health. I don't know if any of you are a fan of Clive Barker's Hellraiser, Bill Dealing's other works on his graphic novels and comics. But Clive's work has the ability to delve right to the back of your psyche, find that fear and exploit it. Hellraiser for me, I don't know if you've seen it, any of them at all. One of them goes in the series number four, yeah? Towards the end, well, the whole story is about this guy who's a cop. He messes with the puzzle box. But what then happens is he gets taken away. He's, he's an adulterer, he's sleeping with other people behind his wife, a prostitute. He's a bad guy, too. He's this big cop. And Henry, the, the pinhead guy at the end, has him sat facing two chairs. In one of the chairs is his child self of the cop. Yeah? So if you were to look at these chairs, you would see the little you when you were five years old, and you'd see the you now. Yeah? In the film, the cop's older self gets up and cuts the throat of the child self. And the, the, the hell raises the Cenobites, the pinhead guy, whatever you want to call it. The demons. He tells them that because he lost his child's spirit, his life had become worse. Yeah. Now for me, when I watched it, which you'll find out as we go through it, why it begins to make sense at the end, is the time I watched that film, I've been through a hell of a lot, and my child self was on my shoulders at the end of it. So I hadn't destroyed the enemy, and I brought it back. Again. Right, so the real me. A lot of people see this inside and more like that, and it's because I do a lot of work, and as I said, in the horror industry, and I'm an actor as well. This has taken the last year's escape from the work. I have to torture some people coming down. And the other more the doom type that comes from. I want to take the horror and make it into something else in some form of entertainment like we are seeing crop up with scare attractions and the zombie shoot them ups and that. But when you see me as this guy on telly shouting, Unleash the heart of doom! Like that, then you'll, you'll know how well made my, um, my track to get my dreams on, on track. And what do I do? Well, I'm an artist if you go to the WWE block job for the vinci.co.uk, you'll see most of me are there. Right? I'm an actor, I work in the horror industry and scare attractions. I write and I blog. I'm a concept artist too for the scare industry. I write comics and stuff too. Investigative journalist analyst. We all should be this, yeah? When we get the news from one source, like Reuters, and everyone else gets the news from there, go somewhere else for your news. I'm a father, I've got three daughters, and I'm Always been in paranormal research and pushing the veil with our psychic powers. We're all psychic. It just depends on how much you use that muscle in your mind. So recently, and this is coming back to do do what you can do and exploit it, but you've also got to make it into a service. Yeah, you've got to be at I say that the others. This is the phone call for the second issue of the sample page for the third issue. But these comments from a friend in the state suddenly pops up online and says, The illustrator's broken wrist and some even harder now. And I just so happen to be looking at that at the right time to jump straight in and say, Yeah, I'll do it and beat the rest get to it. This is where you have to look at the opportunities that present ourselves. So if you're a singer, say you like a singer, and you go to singing, so when people tell you, generally tell you you can sing, and you know you can sing yourself, and you love singing, if a job comes up as a singer, as you're walking down the road, 
you go in and take that job. It doesn't matter if you don't get it, but one day you will.
as Andy said, I'll do your Fumi voice regularly on Planet X, Planet X Live, which used to be on mainstream media, but we took it off. Uh, just like the coast to coast, a couple of up here in America as well. It seems, seems the high and mighty is want all this type of information like off the airwaves, so we're able to go on the ground. And now and again, I will, I will write articles for the Phenomena magazine. They will go in and respond to the fight with the other world as well. So we've been through the J job, day job, if you want to check that out, that's the website there again. Bob Marley, love the life you live, live the life you love. Makes all sense. And the life you want to live is not the same as the life you want to live. You still want to live the way you did. Life is not a live, there's a, a lack of anything that we would want to find in abundance. We all want it, so we all get the colors, get the cars, get the things, get the talent, we all want to get the use. What you want is out there waiting for you. That's my, that's why I love it. That's how I love the last few horrors and stuff. I'll wear the veneers, the contacts. I'll go the extra mile for it. But then that can jump because the next thing you use on next year's advertising. Right. Core reason why from here to happiness. Happiness cannot be travelled to only end one or one or two. Happiness is the spiritual experience of living every minute with love, grace, and gratitude. But then, a thankful heart has a continual peace. But what that actual phrase means is if you're actually grateful for whatever you get, then show it. Don't just alter it. Actually show it. Yeah? Feel it in your heart. More in-depth information, I highly, highly recommend the book, The Seek the Magic, yeah, from Rhonda Bain, who's done The Secret, I'm sure you've heard of that. This is where I've manipulated some of my talk and combined it with this, with this book, helping me a lot. Yeah. It's only seven pounds, be able to get it to the office, anyway. Right, so, I'm going to give you a some activities for the next 14 days. I see a lot of you have got a pen and paper in front of you, so you're going to have to remember these or watch the video back when it gets uploaded. These are going to ask you to actually look at your life and analyse it, but in a positive way, which is the way we need to do because we're getting bombarded by evil on all sides right now. You turn the radio on, it's that bit, that bit, that bit. Idiot DJ. And then the music gets played at 440 and the other heads down, so it's no surprise. We feel a little negative, but we realise once you start doing this, that this is, a, this is an actual power battle between what's coming back here and what you're asking for now. Right, so I expect to give this a go. First thing, tomorrow morning. Make a list of 10 blessings in your life that you are grateful for. Yeah. Start simple. Start with the UV simple. Second, you get up. Thank you, back in a week. You can spend the whole day away. Put feet on the floor. Thank God you've got feet to put on the floor and walk up. Yeah? Because you can touch against the veil a bit too far and you'll quickly realise how lucky you are and how peaked yeah? Go through these whole tens, right? What you're grateful for, it could be a person, it could be a thing, but you know, if you keep it compared on people and store pets or people stuff you love, then that vibe is going to carry with it. It's going to be more powerful. This is high magic I am teaching you. Get them 10 lessons down. Right, why are you grateful for each lesson? And then you reread your list throughout the day. And after reading each lesson, feel the gratitude. And actually hold your heart when you do it because you will feel it. Yeah? After reading each lesson, feel the gratitude as you say the words. Thank you. 
thank you, thank you. Because it's that little trinity of three what makes this universe work. It's affirmation, affirmation, affirmation. And then we peek into the back of the side. The next 14 days. These, what we give you 14 days, this is a simple little task that you can easily incorporate into your life. <coughs> the book will detail up to 30 odd days. After day 15, it gets really difficult. And if you've got the time, I will tell you why I'm set up. But let's get to 14 days. This is something you'll be able to put into your life. So when you get up in the morning, you brush your teeth. Thank God you've got 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 teeth. Thank and Matt, you should do every day for us. Day two, I'm sure you've heard others comment on this. A magic rock, yeah? So when you get up in the morning, you repeat day one's exercise. And now you've got to go out, you've got to find a nice rock. And you can keep up with it, or go find it better. I'm a 35 year old skinhead man with a pearl scouser, and I carry a rock. Before going to sleep, hold your rock in your hand. I think it's the best thing that happened like that. So not all the good things, the best one. Pick the best. And what you'll end up doing is charging that rock or pebble with all the best stuff. And you someone else will pick it up and say, wow, that's one. And you can like that. Well, yeah. Go and get yourself a rock. You'll not believe. How much do you want to do? You, you know, in, in a moment, the, the energy in the water sure. exactly the same thing. We're talking rocks, we're talking crystals, not. But it's exactly the same. Day three, you're going to get up and repeat the first day's exercise. You're going to count to ten different things than what you counted the day before and the day before that. So now like this book or on your computer or your several sheets of lying around, you're going to have all these stuff, you're going to be like, you need your clothes, your missus, your partner, your, your kids, you're you, you, you going to be like, wow, what this is doing is showing you how blessed you are, it shows you how much you've got, yeah, this is a concentration on what you have, so it's concentration on what you need to be happy about and you look at. What you want to do on day three is pick three closest relationships with collective photographs that you want. So these want to be people you like. With the photo in front of you, it's like five things that you are most grateful for about each person. It might always make a laugh. It's always there on time. You never let that. You have three already. Begin the sentence with the magic words. Thank you. You include their name. And what you're especially specifically grateful for. So, Andy, Claire, thank you for inviting me to It's the study. Then carry the new photographs with you that day, or place them somewhere where you can see them off and speak to each person in the photograph as if they can hear it. About why you like them, why you're thankful for them. But sincerely feel your gratitude that goes through the picture. It, it's really talking voodoo S style stuff now where you, you can make something look like right. someone and then you put on to it well actually carry through. But this is all like, you know, I'm not teaching you dark magic, I'm teaching you high magic. Yeah. See how this will work. So you tell them. Why you look them back them three times and feel the gratitude in your heart. And then before you go to bed, repeat the exercise with the rock. So every every night when you go to bed and get any rock, you, you want to try doing this. You, you might miss a few nights and you will find you quickly fall off the horse and you will have to scramble. The best way to do is through this method to get back on and be okay again. I believe because I've been to some very 
bedroom door leads to the inside of the bedroom. Yeah. On day four, you're going to write on a piece of paper or card, the gift of health is keeping me alive. You place that note somewhere where you know you will see it off the other day. And on at least three occasions, read the words very slowly and feel as grateful you, as you can for the precious gift of life. And even if you're healthy, this will make you be healthier. It, it's a good way of, um, you know, if, if you work out, you do a lot of weight or you want to lose weight or stuff like that, it's a great way to actually give that a bit more food. Yes? Sorry, is that all in that picture? This is all in this. Yeah. Um, you won't get my hint on it, but you'll get Rhonda Burns, and she, I think she's brilliant. Uh, I will recommend Rhonda Burns where to, to work more because I, the place I was in before I picked up one of their books, I was crawling on my hands and knees through the depths of hell, and that's psychologically where I was. It's What you're more interested in magic money, yeah? Day five. You'll sit down and take a few minutes to think back through your childhood and all the things that you received that was provided with no charge to you. Hopefully you didn't have a hard childhood, but you know, as a child you never expected to pay anything, how can you pay for it? So everything is automatically provided, yeah? This wants you to go back and remember how you never actually worried about money because you just you, you, it came to what you need was given to you you needed something to eat or a day out or something you were provided with so some people won't be able to connect with that but we're concentrating on the, the general the general population who have quite a an orthodox child upbringing as you recall each memory when money was paid for you say and feel the magic words Thank you with all of your heart for each of these hints. I have to reiterate with your heart. And I recommend putting you the hand. Even if you're in a restaurant and you just say thank you, you, you begin to feel that connection there. And you'd be surprised how quick this one works. You then take a five pound note and write on a sticker or a pencil on the note in big bold letters. Thank you for all the money I've been given throughout my life. And then you put that note in your wallet, in your purse, in your shell, and you can even frame it again. The idea is you want to have that five, right, ten, it, do you want to play it, whatever, you know, it will probably work even, even more powerful. But the idea is you want to keep going past it or taking it out and being happy because you've always got that by a pound spare, and you'll never use it. You will never, ever use it. It'll always be there. So that's when you look at it, and then you'll be in your face, and you'll find the money just comes in. This is magic. So you take your magic fire with you today, at least once in the morning, once in the afternoon, or as often as you want. Take the note, you hold it in your hand, Read the words and be truly grateful for the abundance of money that you have already been given. We probably spent our way through hundreds of thousands of pounds each. Yeah. Some people go, oh, right, it's money. Meant to be spent. Yeah. This is where when you use the law of attraction, don't try and conjure the money up. Yeah, everyone is. Conjure what you want. You might get it without even spending a penny. It's a lot easier to go after the energetic frequency of something than the currency that we're all putting off of so, yeah. Money, currency, energy. Day six. Do you all work? Then we're not there, because it's certain I'm not going to jump down, but no saving in that sort of way, so. Okay, so. <laughs> 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 
Well, the, what is, the beauty of it is, is, is where, where is where, where is the four letter word, yeah? No one likes going to work. If you like going to work, I'd say you've got a career and not a job. Yeah? There's careers for yourself, a job, where it's slavery, don't you? It feels like slavery. Yeah? This is something that, even if you do housework, if you do washing dishes, this is going to work. While at work today, imagine that you're being followed around by an invisible manager who's taking notes every time you find something to be grateful for. Your job today is to look for things to be grateful for. You have a manager who looks for things to be moaning about as well. The trick is, his sheet's got to be empty, and you're the one who looks who's counting gratitude. His has got to be chock full, yeah? Have your manager to make a note each time you find something to be grateful for by saying, I'm so grateful for my new shoes. I'm feeling as grateful as you can. Shoes are new, that's just something you But you will feel a part of your subconscious actually pair up when you start criticizing and being negative and then like, hey, and that's, that's what we need to get is this little interior argument What time are you on? <coughs> Day seven Avoiding negativity This is probably one of the ones that's going to require the most the most way because this reality, well not this reality, this society that's being structured around us to piss full of up. Traffic lights, one, the alarm clock in the morning. You know, that thing, something like that can tell you during the day if you're, if you're not in the right frame of mind. So avoiding negativity is something that we, we, we all need to actually take up as our, our main core, right? Choose one problem or negative situation in your life that you most want to be solved. List 10 things that you are grateful for about the negative situation. Every cloud has a silver lining. We were taught that when we were kids, yeah? At the end of the list, write, thank you, thank you, thank you, for the perfect resolution. We've heard the phrase as well as one door closes and another one open. But if it wasn't meant for you, then it, wasn't, it wouldn't be there for you. Yeah? For the rest of the day, try not to be negative. If you notice yourself thinking or saying something negative, use the light plan. Stop immediately and say, what I have to say that I am really grateful for this. So if there's nothing good on the telly, as an example, you kick off, uh, there's nothing good on the telly, so I'm so glad I've got this massive deep, deep left. If you're, that's the way you've got to swing it. Before we break, is there any questions? Because I'd really like you to hit me with them now, right, so we can get more of the way I like to get them done. Have you tried it with um, younger children or yeah. teenagers? Because I know you've got microphone. Um, <laughs> microphone is daughter, who's 13. Uh, within a matter of two months, I've got just in the Bieber tickets. Um, and you phone. Uh, count, countless you know, new, new clothes, new shoes, and it wasn't too common among them that either. It was like, you know, we might just get more money to go and cheap kids and buy them and that, but then I go back in and say, You've been using a secret, and you might have to like, Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, she actually got a new puppy. You didn't want a dog. I had a dog when I was kids, and this is that dog since years ago, but we grew up and said, We do not want a dog in this house. Teacher, eh? Yeah. She's got dog. Don't the kids teach you that as well? Don't, 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 sorry. Don't the kids teach you that as well? The way it's this parrot track or track of life, they, they read it to you. Well, yeah, that's a track. Yeah, I think they need to be talking to the But the way I that man when I spoke to brought me grow over here before about being in hell, I was literally in, in hell. I hated my life. I hated people. I hated, I hated. 
speaks the 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 we the speaks 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 the Missed it. Okay. But I'm trying to avoid being negative about the elite. Okay, yes. This isn't new age, this is tablets of thought, 
It's ancient, ancient stuff. It's been there all the time. It's been digested. Well, yeah, it's yeah, it's been been digested. regurgitated in some yeah, yeah. sense, yeah, yeah. but yeah. go back to the core value of the heart. We get to get down to the All truth. All truth. And loving kindness. Very, very nice. That's exactly what gratitude is. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, but, well, okay, I, I, I know, I know that, I'm not discussing that, but what I'm saying is, if the motivation, the intention is, you know, yeah. Well, it's got the thing is when you go into black magic, right? If you point a finger at someone, you've got three fingers pointing right back at you. So when it, if you put out, we'll come back threefold. So if anyone wants to be foolish enough and actually try to conjure harm to another person, that is going to hit them like a great train, very, very quick. Oh, yeah. I've seen this happen. It's a better system. It doesn't matter what right. part of the yeah. air yeah. you're studying it. What you find is even the core basis, well, the basis it's of cool. religion. It's the not analysis. even well, the Ten Commandments. It's it's well, it does. These guidelines to live our lives by. Don't be a knobhead. Don't sleep with your mate's wife. Don't go robbing off people. Don't kill anyone. Don't hurt the kids. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's a guidebook for life. Yeah, it doesn't matter. But religion. Religion was put in there to divide and rule. Give us a label. Yeah? I don't see anything. But energy. That's what I see. There's people walking around. Can we have a question? Yeah. Um, have you been to any? Before people. Yeah. Have you been to any? <laughs> have you been to any zombie parties? And can you walk like a zombie? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so the, the next the, time I come, I'll bring me paper bags. That's what I can do, right? Uh, you know, you spoke about your zombie hands and knees for a while. Yeah. I think uh, most of us who've sort of been through a transformation, somehow we've been to the dark. Yeah. Was that before uh, you went on to the um, acting of the... Yeah. Was yeah. before that? Yeah, I was, okay. I was in like sales, then work was public. Okay. Uh, you might as well have to see it. Uh, <laughs> okay. you've, you've got this stuff on the ground. Yeah, yeah. Do you think... Uh, sort of zombified type of energy, which to me personally, whilst you were showing the pictures and he was talking about that, I personally felt there was a dark energy coming over right. and I could see and sense it yeah. in the room as well. Yeah. Do you think you're actually uh, helping the overall energy of the people that you're dealing with by putting that sort of image on the television and on on uh, movies. Yeah, because I do live scare acting. So I do it live scare acting. So the people who experience it pay good money for it and quite a bit of money. It's like you know, the, some of these nights on TV, some of them are, some of them are. So what they've done is actually pay for an experience and I've kept my heart's clear by giving them that experience, but also being able to expose my dark side for the fun it just wants to have. And not, and not bring getting negative back karma wise because everyone was asked for. This is where the show of the yin gang symbol before we have to find that balance within ourselves because we are not all light, we are not all dark. The light will corrupt just as much as the darkness does if you stray too near. That's why when you look on the forums and the internet and the Facebooks and the social media and it'll have someone who's preaching love and light all the time. As soon as someone has a disagreement with them, that's it. They come down on them like that. Like an old Irish nun. The whiskey of the syndrome, you That's how you come down, you come down with a sack of shit, and that's where you point out, hang on, you've just gone right from that extreme all the way to this extreme. So you haven't gone anywhere. So it's finding that, that place in the middle. You see, what um, part of what you were saying about the, um, <coughs> the zombie, right? Yeah. You are actually part of the living service. 
says in the scripture, right, that come to the end of time, the death of the life, walk yeah. the earth. But that's not necessarily in a well, physical sense. In a self in 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 yeah. But in that way, if the prophet who wrote that, that if yeah. the prophet who wrote that looked into the future like the same technique as not to with the glass and the fire, they would have seen them. Yeah. Oh, he's on, he's on. And they'd be like, holy shit, the death's gonna rat. It could have also been the fact that we stop being associated with the corporate identity and we go, hang on, I'm not dead like the birth certificate. Well, it's it's like I'm so we will if there again, we've got so many different euphemisms the way it can be slotted into that it has to mean all. Anyone else? So we have a brand. So we say thank you very much. So I'm going to introduce John back in now that was perfect time. Maybe we didn't see the right time. So it's John and Brian and all. Thank you very much. Thank you. On, on that note there, with the guy who thinks about their detail, all those working years and then spending a week there, what I would suggest to them being through something, something like that, move there. <laughs> you know, we are on a tiny, tiny globe that is only, believe it or not, roughly about 8,000 miles wide. Yeah, that's how small our planet is. Right. Day seven, I read this, didn't I? You all know this one, yeah? So, every time that, that thundercloud comes along, look for the silver lining around it and identify it. Be grateful for it, because every, every cloud does have this silver line. It's like I said before, when one door closes, one door slams shut, and you come flying out of it, you go rolling it through. And this is all meant for us. Some of them, you've all heard the phrase, a blessing in the sky. Yeah. If you're in a job that you didn't like and you got sacked, way, way to go. What do you want if you didn't like and got sacked? Find some seconds. Cracking up, day eight. The taste of happiness. Before you eat or drink anything today, Take a moment to, walk, to look at what you're about to eat or drink, and in your mind or out loud, say the magic words, thank you. You could even imagine that you're sprinkling your food with magic stuff. Right. How many times have you been in an argument with your partner? Now, I'm male, I do cook, or well, Mrs. likes to cook as well. How many times have you been out in an argument and then the foods tasted like shit. Yeah? That's because we put all that hate and anger in the food. And without fail, the food tastes like shit. You make it with a love the recreation, love making the food, love the thought that you're actually filling the bellies up with the people who you love. The food tastes fantastic. This is a trick between being a gourmet chef and working in Greasy Joe's car, yeah. This little sprinkling of gratitude will work on oh, everything. Yeah. It's like after you've washed the car. Thank you. Get a new new clothes. You really feel the joy in getting in your clothes because if you don't do that, you'll put them clothes on. You'd be a different side, you've got to take the shit back. But um, it goes into a lot greater depth in the book. This book, the magic on each of these, and it'll go into a huge amount of depth. We've only got a short amount of time. I need to bash this into your head. Yeah. So I'm looking for the negative, look for the positive. In everything, if you fall over, bang your head. There might be a pound coin on the floor where you pick yourself up from. You're looking at this way, and that coin will then bring you more luck if you make it take both lots of tickets. You might only get ten pounds back, but 
This is the way of reality works. Day nine. The money magnet. Still pay bills? Or you remind yourself of uh, <laughs> every single day you've got? <laughs> um, right, okay. We're always going to have bills, whether you totally segregate yourself from the direct debit, banking, fraud, the fraudulent system altogether, you are still going to have to pay bills, you've got shopping bills, you eat, lecture, you want to go out, eat a meal in the restaurant, you don't need to the bill. The idea is, is you take the bill. I'll read this page first so I can read it to you. Take any quote or pay bills you have, use gratitude's magical, magical power, and write across each one. Thank you for the money. Yeah? Feel grateful for having the money to pay the bill, whether you have it or not, because the universe isn't working on haves, have nots, wants, don't wants, likes, dislikes, it's thinking whatever the core thing you're thinking of. I've got too much money in my bank account. Guys got too much money in the bank account. Give me more money. Yeah. I've got enough money in my bank account. That, that's going to be your perpetual experience. So if you're short on cash, you've got to look at, well, I can beat myself for the week. And I can, I can splash out for the weekend. I can buy them this, I can pick that up, I can get that next one. You know, you've got to like be really analytical on the energy you're putting into the bills you paid out. If you've took a service from someone, say if they're doing this, come round to build you a new set of stairs. And if you're being asked about signing this check or paying them at the end of it, then you'll probably find that was job being blackbuster. <coughs> Whereas if you're happy to have them there, he's doing the job, buying the service, happy to pay the money for that service, he's going to do the best job he's ever done for. And you're going to be made up because you pay them. When, yeah, the, graphic, the level of gratitude that he wants for the service that he's got, he's happy because he's doing something for them. You know, I know when we start paying for goals, it's not better than when you're finished and the kids come in or yeah. It's completely out there and we're getting paid to bow and do something you love, they want the service and other people want it. So you take 10 bills that you've paid in the past and write across them. Thank you, paid, that'd be dead easy to pay them, you've dealt with them, so you can take receipt shop, shop and you can start off with hair so your wallet, anything you've done and already paid, write that because this backs up your psyche with the power to say, yes, I can pay my bills. So you, you re educate yourself instead of worrying. Just on that, <clears throat> does, does anyone else find that if you offer people a solution? You know, if someone says, oh, I'm struggling with money this week and I've had this parking ticket. If you offer them a, a solution like just send a letter and don't pay, they'll almost refuse that solution. You know, like when people build up something, I could do with some money, and you say, go on Gumtree, and there's people give stuff away for free, and they go, I can't, I can't bother. So even when you offer a solution, well, a great guy, a lot of people will push it away quickly. <coughs> There's an American guy, well, Canadian guy called Bob Proctor, who talks about this same stuff, type of stuff. And I think he is one of the best names to type into Google or YouTube if you want to delve into this a lot more. Uh, he'll write to uh, books like you were born this, and he's got hour long seminars on YouTube. Bob Proctor. What he would have said to that, what you said, Andy, was, uh, I think it's a quote. It's free advice, it's free and worth nothing. It's good advice, you pay for it, you keep it. So be okay with the, the money market things. What you're doing is you're taking stuff you bought, you paid for, and then putting it on the stuff that you haven't yet paid for. So that has already become something you have paid for in your heart and mind. So you're going to get the cash for that then. This is something that you find that 
you don't even have to think about how you're going to get that money, you will get that money. The universe worries about the how, all we've got to do is order it, but why? Yeah. We take care of the why, the universe will do the how. Day 10, spread happiness. So today, you know, day 10, you're going to sprinkle magic dust on 10 people who perform services you benefit from by thanking them directly or otherwise by mentally acknowledging me and thanking them. Feel grateful to them for the service they perform. So this is, if someone opens the door for you, if someone serves you in a shop, you thank them because I know what it's like to be in a shop and serve what could be classed as autonomous droids who just come in and give you money and take the stuff to you know, the, the, This human interaction is just totally gone from society. We need to be able to go. By thanking them, you probably buy that person who you suddenly set aside and go, do you know what? Thanks for that. I'd be, you'd probably be the first person who said it to you all day, if not all year, if not all year, because this is how we've been misled into living. I was on the flight, um, I talked to you in so that I met you, I said to the uh, waitress on the way out, to the waitress on the way back to the street, I said to the waitress on the way back to the street, I said to the waitress on the way back to the street, I said to the waitress on the way back to the street, For the room yeah, you are. So <laughs> give it <laughs> Someone's giving you a service, you show gratitude for that service and pay for what's due to yeah? you. You don't expect back of yourself if you were providing service to someone. But you know, you, you need to eat. You, you know, what else are you going to do? This actually backs everyone up. It binds instead of being jealous that you made him work or promoted over the end and now get in the car, you begin looking at stuff. Well, what has he done that I did? It's not that guy. Shit, getting all that, you know, being jealous, you're actually looking at it from another point of view. What did you do, right? By day 10, you'll have found many things, people, occasions, and experiences to be grateful for. And bear in mind, we'll find the 10 every morning when you wake up doing this. Yeah? As soon as you wake up, you've got 10. So then you're going to go out and do stuff like this, and then you're going to count. Your gratitude on, on the rock when you get home each night. Like, um, you'll be surprised how quick this works. If you follow each step up to day 10, you would have seen several massive changes by day 10 already that I've shipped you off. Why don't we give you 14? You'd be any more than that, you forget after 10, and you're just like, wow! And that's, that's just exactly what we like. Day 11, happy day. When you wake up to the new day, before you do a single thing, say the magic words, thank you, works a lot better than from that time again, or, or I, I used to swear a lot. When you know in the morning and you find that's a snowball that is avalanche downhill and you're never gonna get that back. If you find your day does start like that, I suggest you get back in bed and get off your side and you'll find it just it stops. Right but yeah, as soon as you wake up, you start, thank you, it's another day, it's another day to live. Do you, if you realise how long you wait in the afterlife to get another chance to play this game again, you would not waste a single day. From the moment you open your eyes until you have finished getting ready, say the magic words, thank you, in your mind for everything you touch and use. So this is your clothes, 
thank God I've got clean socks, clean underwear, I can find something that matches me top to my pants. It, it's easy, it's easy. So the trick is, is you can actually put this into play before you go to bed and then form these keeping easy yourself in the morning. And then you kick off, you take one exercise which you call them things. This the day one exercise where you go about the ten things now. I suggest you do it for at least two weeks, the full 14 days. After that, it could be something that's mental in your head, so you don't have to physically do it. But you'll find when you start doing it and you come away from it, and then you find the book or the papers that you've been writing in the years ago, you will see the massive amount of advance you have made in a tiny amount of time. It can turn your life around. This can make bad relationships work. Jobless employees, people hate the lives, love the lives. Yeah. This is the complete and the whole game changer. Day 12. People who made you happy. Find a quiet place alone sometime during day 12 and make a list of three people who made a difference in your life, including being a teacher in school, friends and family, an auntie, and a few more than that. Kids, if you were to let me, the end goal. Break through the list one person at a time, and while talking out loud, tell each person the reason why you were grateful for them, and exactly how they affected the course of your life. So I think this is like day four, day five exercise where you've got the three people who you have the closest relationship to. Them, yeah? Now you just pick in someone from your past who do, you've done something a while ago and because they did that, this happened. And you look back. Yeah. Not what people who hit. <laughs>
think of it in that manner, like the Harley is riding along the road, you can see the angle bars, you can see everything going past, that's going to be the better way to bring that object here. What was the first great thing you did when you received your design? So you've got to include as much detail as you can in your mind. The best way of doing it is to remove actually use the heart to feel it, use the mind to conjure it. You are now playing several games that you used to play every hour of every day as a child. When life was my <coughs> Day 14. Create happiness each day. In the morning, work your way in your mind through the plans you have for the day and evening until bedtime. With each plan or event, say the magic words, thank you for, having, for it having gone well. Imagine that you're saying thank you at the end of the day and you're immensely grateful because it went perfectly. If you're doing stuff like this and you find negativity, Putting it through it in, stop doing it, don't do it, yeah? You've worked way far enough, now this is where the magic does go down at the high end scale of where you get hurt. This is why I've only brought us up to day 14. I will be day 15 to show you what's expected of you after this day, but I must implore that if you find that when you are future creators, that's what we do. If there's any negativity and come straight back out of it and stop doing it until you're in a better frame of mind. Put some music on that you like, do something that you love doing, and then give it another go. Because what you don't want to manifest is what you don't want. And you can. Right. After you've finished being grateful for all the plans of your day going brilliantly well, end this magic practice by saying and thank you for the great news coming to me today. This helps you set up each day then, so you're not worrying about missing the train, being late for work, which will make you late for work and miss the train. You're creating it in yourself, so like driving down here tonight, I envisioned a nice straight through run. I was here 20 minutes earlier than the sat now said that I was even speed, so that's it. This is what you've... It's the little game that we have to play with ourselves. And the game is constantly being played up against us. Day 15. Day 15 will ask you to find three people who you don't like. Yeah. This is why I've talked to day 14. Day 15 wants you to find pe people who shit on you from a great height. The worst type of shit as well, yeah? And forgive them. Yeah? Uh, and you're looking at your faces and you're like, what? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> They've done this to me, I'll never forgive that. We, if you want to go further and get your dreams and desires and your greatest ambitions and actually reach and bite all day to go, you know what? Ah, you give it a good <coughs> Then this is what you're going to need to do. So I'll read through day 15 and I'm going to change the subject. Any questions while well, I just try and group this one down because it's going to take a second. No? Yes. Yes? 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 The ship from the great heights, as well as on the boat, is people who have shot on you from the great heights. So just say you've trusted someone and they totally squashed that trust and shot on you from the great heights. That's where I was going with that thing. Um, the cancer thing is deeply worrying for me, and you'll see why in a minute. So I actually believe 
that a lot of the UFOs are from the future. Um, I think what, from the future are, or are possible future. Yeah. Yeah, because um, look at what they're doing to the environment, the aluminium, the barium, the, the, as I said before, the GMOs in the food. We're, we are in a toxic environment. Stuff like cancer will grow in acidic environments. So we are being made as acidic as we can, yes. Are you suggesting, because you sort of jump from chemtrail to UFO, are you suggesting that the chemtrails are being sprayed by UFO? No. Why would the UFO stop spraying chemtrails oh. on a bank holiday? <laughs> yeah? The, this is a military industrial complex that was being poisoned by RRAF poisoned French skies, French poisoned our skies, and this is how it works, yeah? So why did you go UFO? Why did you go UFO? Because of the subject that's coming up in a minute. Um, I was referring to what we're doing now, in the present, the poison, yeah? Um, have you seen the test on the, the rats in the GMO foods? What? Where they grow all these massive tumours and stuff like that, several weeks, yeah? Well, if you're doing that, what the planet is, the extent the heck. The planet is a massive Pyrex dish. So anything you do in that environment, it's going to have an effect on everything, no matter, no matter what it is. Whether we're breathing in nanoparticles, nanoparticles, and little robots, machines, and we've all been already cyborg cyborgized, yeah, if that's the word, then we're basically pissing into the wind as far as we can see, yeah. I'll go on to that in a second. Right, a classic example. Or the day 15. Yeah? Choose one difficult, problematic, or broken relationship that you want to improve. Sit down and make a written list of 10 things you're grateful for about the person you've chosen. Write it down in the following way. Me, I am grateful for. I don't have to see anyone. <laughs> Think of you something just like that. Just before you go to sleep at night, you some magic bar and carry on with that. Right, we've got time for sort of complete the day. Yeah. Is anyone looking at tomorrow and thinking, right, I'm going to go up and do this? I'm going to go buy the book. Go buy the book. <laughs> but there's stuff like writing the 10 affirmations down, finding a nice rock, two real easy moves. Yeah? I hope you will, because when you're outside looking in and you remember you're also everyone else looking out as well, then I don't want to see another part of me struggling for being able to happen. Yeah? Well, I hope there's a film of you on the internet doing this as I'm not saying to you. Well, this will be put up on the film, you won't work anyway, so you can come back and catch up on that. Um, As we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. John F. Kennedy was the instrumentalist. But there's, he's saying again, the highest appreciation is not to utter the word. So if you just say that, you don't mean it. Don't say it. I mean, it's not even worth saying. You might as well call me Ted or something, you know. Don't mean it. Right, so my first ebook, which is where I pull all of my seminars and talks from, it's only $1.99, it's on, on Amazon, it's called Why We Is God. I explain the grammatical error in the tell you. Is is more of a, a lie word. R just did not work, that's a type R on a look. 
and having to be uh, met up off the court that dog quick. It was in a couple of weeks. I was getting took to hospital and getting diagnosed with cancers and like, lymph nodes and shit like that. Which then, either through the law of attraction and doing methods like this, through whether I actually, I actually remembered changing reality that night when I got told that when I was walking through a city crying because even though I had friends around me, I had no relatives because I like, but as I said, that pit, I'll be in the pit. I know exactly what it's like. Yeah. The memory that I've tried to deny goes like this. You've heard of the mantis, yeah? Heard mantis people, mantis? Like. The memory I have that night is the window opens and there's an incandescent bright white blue light that shines through the window. You can't see where it's coming from, it just looks like a massive spotlight, yeah? The next thing I remember is being in the light. Lots of stuff happened in that dream. Well, dream. I was there, Joe I woke up with the physical evidence. It feels like a dream. The core part is this mantid being, which is what they say with like an insectoid thing, it looks like a praying mantis, but it was like a really dark metal, gum metal grey with a cloak on it. Yeah. And it's shown, it's brought into this room, what the room was, it just looked like a room full of stars, but then I quickly realised that that is how they overlay the driving screen into this room that they have so when you are on board an ET craft you do not feel any inertia, momentum or movement whatsoever. It is like being stood in this room but if you made the walls transparent this would be flying through the sky, through the sea, coming across the world right? and you would not feel a single movement at all. You just see it with passing it. He brings up what is an oval screen. And I'm what, 35 now, because this back when I was 19, so this was 16 years ago, yeah. And on this screen was floods, tsunamis, earthquakes, war, and he's telepathically communicating with me while I'm looking at this. And bear in mind, I was a 19 year old male who'd been brought up on video games and sci fi films. I, I had no concern many of the disasters that unfolded on the screen for me. Because of that, he wasn't too happy, that's all I can remember from that. And then the scene switched, where I found myself with these two beings, where one's like a tall ape, and I'm not on about like a Bigfoot style thing, is he was dressed, in cloaked and gowned, and there was this strange hybrid girl. The hybrid girl, they make you have sex with. I, I will not cloud over that at all. I don't know what happens for females, whether there's like a, a study who comes in, but you know, female ones. And afterwards, he basically says, you know, what you put in here, you keep Because I want to keep it. But he's like, no. She's ours, and what is in here is not ours. So there's obviously a genetic seeding program that is going on throughout our solar system, if not the universe beyond. And it kind of makes sense that it would do anyway. Anyway, she leaves, and she had a tail, by the way, weird, like, starts a tail. And that's when he's like, no, you're staying in there. And then these things were up away from which is why it touched on the chemtrails and automatically came into the UFO thing before. These were big nose greys and they fuck this big and about a dozen of them ran in the room and they, they throw you down. Bear in mind you're getting this all the time, it's like you have a complete full telepathic communication with these things. Yeah? <coughs> what I got off these things was you know, from a timeline that is ahead of us 
it may not be this timeline I go wrong, but the thing that went wrong was all the poisons and toxins in the diet and what the survivors of whatever happens over the next four years end up like all these like, big bulbous and big no skinny flame. I mean everyone said the future of humankind is this big headed scrawny little but scrawny little body rail great type being yeah Feed on up by, yeah. Yeah, you can feed on. That's what John Rettel is. Similar line to what you're saying. What this has happened to the This was happening. It was like having a full on communication with them in English. But. Has anyone got a dog? But with dogs, this is really easy. When you feed your dog, you put the food in its bowl. And you don't have to tell it anything. You should pitch it, food in the bowl, and then the next thing the dog's up the bowl. Okay. Um, what I was getting off these is we want your genes, we want your big strong, we do oh, you know, we've got hair, and, and that's what it was like. It was like, oh, I've got this shot. And it was like being jumbled, being in a jumble sale, but you're the sale, and that's exactly how I felt. But that wasn't the worst of it. His big nose crazy with the black eyes and they had big nose ice. It may be a contact lens or something, but you remember that very sinister. Just oh. the garments were like black with the shiny bit as well. But it was this thing. Um, you notice the the ridges on it and that it do you wear a worm is all segmented? Yeah. This is what its fingers were like. It was like everything was segmented. I actually think some of the first designs to eat cake came from these creatures because Steven Spielberg was admitted he was shown stuff before he came up with ET. And anyway, ET wanted to be dead scary, but everyone thought it was cute. My thing with ET is kids, if you let kids watch it, you get obsessed with watching it. And they'll watch it about 16 times, and then all of a sudden one night they'll have a dream about DT, and they'll never watch it ever again. That's what I can do with mine then. Anyway, this thing was just constantly biting me. I remember its fingertips, yeah? Just say so you had a fingernail growing out <laughs> of every single end of your fingertip, yeah? So coming out of the fingertip, like a gecko and it scratch. So it's trying to keep hold of me and shove this stuff in me. It's one of them called the hemorrhage with the nose set. And it, it's the end of its fingers really scratch. I remember being really upset about that. And even now, I don't like looking at that picture. My thing is, when you go on with ancient cave paintings, you see any big nose rays. Do the statues up in the thousands and thousands of years old. Do you know, I look at this and I see the thing with the bed around its head, it's shouting or it, it's doing something, yeah? But you're all big nose crazy. If you went back to that picture drawn before, that's an almost exact replica. Do the energy coming out, that's energy coming out their eyes, that, and that looks like the other thing is just true as well, that looked exactly like it, yeah? These things have been messing with us for, for millennia. I write in the e-book that I actually believe they are trying to come back from the future and reinstigate themselves in our past and that's why the seeing, that's why the Sphinx came out of the sand when they found it, that's why the pyramids came out of the sand, everything comes out of the sand and I'm saying that in the sands of Africa, under the Sahara Desert, there are thousands of pyramids. These pyramids span the globe. China's got pyramids, did you know that? Yeah. Yeah, Bolivia. Pyramids yeah. everywhere, yeah. yeah. Funny thing about the Chinese pyramids is just when Eisenhower put their satellites up in space, the Chinese couple of all its pyramids with soil and start planting crops on them. And when they asked why they've done that, it turns out the legend that goes with the Chinese pyramid is 
port, 7 port, 8 port, 9 port, white. The engine rate. So what we've done now is when people start asking questions, like, hey, Jack, what pyramids? Well, what's the history with the pyramids? Well, at that time, just before the Cold War, what the Vietnam War was on, to admit that the whole Oriental society, culture, background, upbringing was actually started by white Europeans. They went, they would have got them to put, this is where it would have looked like then. It would have totally trounced the whole Chinese, Japanese, no, no, we have to culture because basically we would have admitted that white people were responsible for their decisions. More pictures again. So, in fact, this one here, that statue, that is a Cyprian ancient painting, so from Cyprus. But when we go on again, you know, they were seeing something. Whether they were gods, demons, extraterrestrials, in the future, we can debate. But the one thing for sure is they are there and need to be seen. Also, I don't know if you know personally any strong psychics. Um, what I've seen Freemasons, I believe we have got friends of Freemasons, is you can invoke these for protection. Yeah? These reptilian entities of what I believe is the jinn. Yeah? This one, when I was when I wasn't well in the 20s, it was one night I was I used to get really bad skin conditions, so I'd scratch a lot, yeah. And it was like having alien hand syndrome. We've seen that where they try and get dressed and like, oh, oh we'll pick this nice white shirt up and the hands like, no, you're wearing your wife's skirt. <laughs> you know, it was a big nightmare for some people. I, I was clawing the skin off my face. Yeah, they couldn't stop. They couldn't stop it at all. I even hate doing it again because it's a while. It's a long time ago now, but it's not me. I caught a reflection in my in the window in the kitchen. It was about half ten at the bottom. Right? So she did it just like this little bit. Three eyes, bitches. We all have this reptilian brain in the core of our heads, which is just right underneath our bit of that. Oh, I need a plan, yeah. That's where the battle between good and the evil lies. <coughs> reptilian, whatever, from itself, pioneer, but something better. And this is where we've got it combined to because in Lucifer was an angel of light. Yeah. Angels, demons, same thing, it depends on perspective. So if you're doing stuff that you shouldn't be doing, invoking stuff that you shouldn't be doing, see it's gonna happen that shouldn't happen. You see this all over the place. Yeah. Whereas if we're doing stuff from servitude level, these things are gonna look on with approval and give you back the thing that you are putting out. Yeah. Oh, something I was going to grind up on that, but it comes back to me a little bit. But yeah, this is where I've seen Freemasons actually have used these pieces. I've seen them with my own eyes, like behind me will hold the soldiers and once again watching Ed Milliband six years ago when he first stood up for his confidence and I said, then he's your next Prime Minister. And that, I also predicted Cameron about two years before he was elected as well. But um, you kind of, do you know when you move a wardrobe? No, you know, you move furniture and you will walk it. That's what he was doing to know that. As people did walk at the stage, he was obviously like, it looked like he was doing that. So. But anyway, yeah, the, these are of what is in the antimatter, yeah? Dark matter is what keeps us all separate and apart, and it's all illusion for the world together. So it's it's making light of the dark. Yeah.
Yeah, some psychic seas, stuff more like that. I'll, you know, put the book again on the bottom of there, but yeah, when I look at Obama, I see that. Yeah. It's become so bad, I've actually had to go and look away from the screen, especially if it's a live speech. Yeah. I would think that's what he looks like. I think that's the energy he is invoking when he is put in them positions. Yeah. It's like uh, Johnny Depp won't watch a minute of any of his films. He even did the first film was a nightmare of Elm Street. He's done all the Pirates of the Caribbean. He's never watched a single film. Why? Because he sees what he sold the soul to get doing the performance. Yeah. So that's what I'm talking about when I spoke to you earlier about you know, doing that kind of work. Yeah. And that's all, folks. Let's say thanks very much. Thanks very much. Yeah, it was very scary and we came off them straight away. Oh, 
that's the crazy thing is, is um, for us to see what's happening. So, so the locality of high water is very important. When you mention that, it immediately comes to mind consciousness. It's like uh, with, with the friend saying before about the, the spirit of jumping the past. Like we've been in scare attractions and that you actually feel that energy come around because these feed off emotions like fear and love and joy and hate and that. But with, uh, I've actually been stood there and one of my colleagues has gone, can you feel that? And I've gone, you can feel it, can you? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, well, yeah, it's terrible to be fair. It, that's the, it's keeping your nose clean. You've got to remember that what I'm saying is we are all equally dark as we are light. This is what the yin and yang is meant to teach us. As long as we don't actually do anything negative. Well, you are doing it by just... Not if they want it. it. I mean, Not if they want it. Yeah, but you know, it's just like saying, okay, I, um, I don't know, I went into a brothel and, you know, sex all the women because they all wanted it all right. <laughs> 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 ah, but did yeah. they pay you? To me, it's like you're standing there, which is all great. You know, you tell us about the light side and all that kind of stuff. And you know, you, you so you do this, and then and you go over the dark side and you work on the dark side as well. Hey, I wouldn't so say we're work, work on it. I'll play. I wouldn't well. say we're work on it. Um, I've always known what scares people and what makes people laugh, and I am exploiting the things I do best. People want the experience because they get to jump the hard races, it's exciting, and what do they do at the end of it? They laugh at it, don't So, that's where I have to reiterate. I'm not doing anything wrong, and you actually want it. Zombie parking. Zombie parking. I even do a, a clown, a delivery clown. <laughs> Can you push away the negative? Oh, can you push it away? 
Well, that, that's, that's looking for the silver lining on the cloud. I think we can do it. That's what money was saying. Yeah, that's yeah. what money was saying. Yeah, they were saying that they were going to do something with the money. Yeah, yeah. 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 that balance will take care of itself. You don't have to worry about how. Yeah? All, all we can actually take full responsibility, responsibility for is the energy we put out. So if you're putting out all the right energy and something bad happens, it's because it, it was set in stone, it was going to happen. But it's how you deal with that badness that will deter what happens next. Yeah. Or see then what happens next. Yeah. Right. So, I'm sorry, but did that answer your question? Yeah, I said another point to you came up with it. Come, come back to me in a second. Yeah. Yeah. I read a story of a guy who had exactly the same alien adoption experience on a daily basis and screamed and showed the disaster. You, you find most experiences are the same, it's the subtle, subtle effects. It was the people saying we could sex them, but they were actually putting migrant people on the earth and people were giving birth to these migrant beings. Was this Simon Park, was it all? I can't remember the guy's name. He ran away to the location. It's weird, like, the, the, the implants are out of the van. Because I've had, when I used to work outside a lot, and it died down, now it died down from like 2006 to 2011. They were really quiet. I didn't see any UFOs at all. Whereas, like, when I was on 25, 26, I wouldn't even have to look for them. I'd go and see one. I'd just, I'd, it's like, something just switched on. I'd look up straight out. And I have seen spheres come out of the clouds and follow the contrail of a jet, you know, and duck in. And I was like, I've seen what you call cigar shaped objects come out of the cloud and throw the hair coming towards the ground by a nearby air field. And then do a complete U turn and shift back into the cumulative limbs. From that, I got the impression it was human flow because when I was looking at it on the coffee plate, like, what's that? I got the impression it went, whoa! And that is how I felt watching it. So, whether we've got submersible type vehicles that fly in the air. It's a problem with good life with lightness now, especially coming out with all this uh, new stuff where you've got uh, what is it, air jet engines, and that's how we're going to put us into orbit so you can go on all these little uh, excursions into outer space. I can, from my perspective, I can assure you there are a whole heap of UFOs still out there. Um, I've seen them you know, real up front. Yeah, it's time to, but there are a lot, I think that the nature, the types of UFOs that are in now are different from the ones that uh, took you all away. I think those ones are uh, not on the planet Earth as they used to be. And I think it's more light energy UFOs that we're seeing here now. When you when I say light, true, um, as you probably described them, sort of angelic type of UFO days before. Those who are looking out for the betterment of humanity and the planet. I think that's what I've seen out there. Well, it's if anyone comes out with the Ashtar Command stuff and the Intergalactic Federation of Light, I, I... It's not that I'm necessarily talking about. I, I would tell you to not, not go down that route. No, no, I'm talking about... Um, what else? Can sorry, I I'm, what you I'm watching you, man. There's a lot of stuff going on around you, but... Can I ask you a question when, when you see the UFOs? Do you know you're going to see them before you see them, or are you just like scrutinising the sky? No, I, I just look to see them. You just look up to yeah. see them, you talk to you as well. To me? Oh yeah, I wouldn't be surprised, but I'll tell you this something, but I love you. But you know what, <laughs> I've seen a lot of sort of conflicting energies around you, man. Um, I think you probably need to come out of the, um, what's that? No, no, it's... <laughs> when, when I say I've pushed against the veil, I have pushed against the veil and it pushes back 
So I know exactly how far to push and how not to push it. Um, you will see a lot fly around because, as I said before, I spend a lot of my time in the actual vortex itself. Because once you do these tricks a lot, do these affirmations, this practice on it each day, you will end up being in the creative zone and being a creator. And it's harder to come out of doing that than doing it. I come from a place of balance, you know. Heaven doesn't want me. Hell's a place that I'll let you go with it. There you go. <laughs> just got, got one more question. Uh, yeah, it's just um, just going on from what I asked before. Yeah. Um, I just want to um, ask a bit more about this not thinking negatively. And how would you um, sort of explain people uh, that's to somebody that needs to have healing and perhaps needs to explore, um, you know, we maybe get feedback towards No, I'm, one or? I'm talking from a perspective of a therapist and right. as, as a life coach. Um, you know, you, you speak to people and they need to explore what's going on and um, well, talk about these life coaching, life coaching is feelings. Exactly the same as management, exactly the same as people management. The best thing with people management, you need someone to do something, the best way of getting them to do it, whether you want to do it or not, is to make it their idea. Yeah? So instead of trying to say you're a consultant and you're like a coach and you've got a patient with you, instead of saying, oh, you should eat right, or you should go play tennis, or you should do this, you should do that, you know, sure, in fact, someone says, you should, you go, God. Yeah. That's what people did. You want to do this, you want to do that, you want, you're giving me an order, I'm not going to do any of it. That's how all of us react. You say that to a three year old child, they go, ha ha, I'm not doing it. Yeah? You make it their idea. If you really look good, look, you should be a good man. That's it. Leave it there. Have you ever looked into spiritual enlightenment? Leave it there. Yeah? Sometimes people only need. You don't need to be led, you don't need to be pushed, you just need to go flat. I'm going to say thank you very much. Thank you.